Hello and welcome to The Fan Show. Today we're looking at restoration. Uh, I'm joined here today by Model Unit Supervisor Mike Tucker, uh, who's currently restoring some pieces for the Doctor Experience. Mike, can you take us through uh, what you're doing at the moment? Well, we're currently working on two Tom Baker era monsters. We're working on Morbius from 1976. Bye, Morbius! Have returned from the grave! And we're working on a mandrel from 1979. Well, what condition was Morbius in when you found him? To be honest, he was in fairly poor condition when we got him. We need to sort of try and preserve the bits that are in reasonable condition yeah. and then completely replace the bits that are actually past saving. And a lot of these costumes back in the day, they, they wouldn't have been made to last, would they? So you've no. really got a difficult job there to kind of all. make these temporary said, suits. This is what, 1976 show? Yeah. Um, probably 1975 when it was built. Yeah. So, where do you start? Like when you receive something like, like you showed us a photo earlier of how Morbius looks when you when you first received him. Where do you begin? Well, the first thing to do is to actually get them back onto a mannequin um, because quite often with these things, they're, they're on shop window mannequins that may not necessarily be the right height or the right width. Yeah. So you look at pictures, look at video of the show, dig out the DVDs, give it a proper yeah. viewing, and work out sort of how big the thing actually would have been. I knew this was worn by a stuntman called Stuart Fell. I knew that Stuart was roughly my height, and I knew that he was looking out through the neck. Then you strip the latex suit off what it used to be on, and very carefully put it back on the new mannequin. Once that's done, you can start gluing it back down because we're, we're in no illusion that anyone's ever going to be able to get back into this yeah, suit yeah, and wear it again. Yeah. <laughs> so it's, it's purely for display purposes now. So I'm able to glue this mm. to the underlying fiberglass structure. And once that's done, now it's safe. Now I can start sort of gluing stuff, pinning stuff back in, repairing the damage to the latex, gluing the fur back on, knowing that it's not going to be pulled on and off anything anymore. And once you've got that stabilization, then you can really go to town with starting to repair the latex and repair the damage that's Ooh. been caused. These days, a monster would be sculpted in clay and then a mold taken yeah, and yeah. then a piece taken out. This is done by what we call direct build techniques. So you're actually laying on sections of foam, sections of carpet underlay, sections of cotton wool, and then you're mixing up a thick paste of latex. Yeah. And it's almost going on like oil paint. You can yeah. sort of almost see it. You can almost see the brush marks. So it gives you these layers on yeah. there that's, yeah, and, and one that's of the really organic. And one of the things that you need to do is stop being too precise about things. When you look at it, it's like, oh, they really have just got a spatula and yeah. just gone yeah. at it. And you have to sort of get back into that mindset of the guy who was doing this in 1976, probably in a mad rush. Which is against the clock, yeah, yeah. not in a creative so way. Yeah, they yeah. weren't thinking, oh, let's make this beautiful. They were yeah. thinking, this is gonna be a studio. Today, yeah. so, um, <laughs> so it's trying to get back into that mindset and think, well, what would they have been doing back then and recreate it in the same manner, not trying to use modern materials, not trying to use a modern sensibility. I'm trying to recreate how this looked in the 70s. Yeah. The arm obviously was missing because that would have been the arm of the actor. That was Stuart Fell's yeah. arm actually protruding. So it's actually a cast of my own arm. <laughs> I thought I would actually get you my own little bit of immortality and get my yeah. own arm in there. The claw is again, not the original claw. That would have been um, a fiberglass piece that would have been operated by Stuart. This is now a polystyrene copy of what we had. That was the brain that was inside, um, which has obviously been made out of like polystyrene. polystyrene. Yeah. So they've done, you know, a sort of a rough and ready version yeah, of yeah, it, if you yeah, like. Yeah. It's a rough and ready thing that's just been thrown in there. And that's what we found inside the, the head when we got him down. So we did a little bit of digging. I remembered from the effects department mold store that the mold of the brain of Morbius still existed, even wow. as late as 1985 when I joined. Um, and I also knew that there were a couple of Doctor Who fans um, in, the doc in the effects department at the time. And I, I was fairly certain that somebody would have taken a cast of, of, the, original. of the original. And we managed to track down not the original mold itself, but a new silicon mold that had been taken off a cast. Wow. So what we've actually been able to do here is recreate the brain in fiberglass, looking identical to how it did back in the show. Okay. You can then start looking at photographs. So we know how big the brain is. So once you know how big the brain is, you can then extrapolate, well, there, yeah. how long the eye stalks are gonna be. You know how big the, the dome is. You know how big the neck thing. So it's, it's almost like a bit of a detective story of sort of yeah. going through and working out what pieces you need. And what you hopefully end up with is something that 
to all intents and purposes looks identical to how it last looked on screen. And that's the last bit that's being done now prior to, to going down. And that will be mounted up on there and that gets him up to full height and starting to look as he did back in the show. So there's, um, there's quite a lot of work involved in getting these things sort of back in their, their screen used state. Morbius is very much a direct build monster. Yeah. The Tetrap is very much an example of something that's been sculpted and cast. And then you have something like the Mandrel yeah. standing behind you, that's an example of something that's been made by the costume department and, and is a very sort of fabricated way yeah. of making things. Yeah, it's like this sort of leather that's, that's, that's gone on here. Yeah, I mean, this was made by the costume department rather than the effects department. Mm. And they go down a very, very costumey way of making it. So all the scales are leather, individually cut little circles of leather that have all been applied over to the bodysuit. You've got fur, you've got netting and mesh. Even the sections, you can just sort of see it yeah. if you spin him round, the sort of piece under his chin, the sort of skin area. Yeah. It's all been done out of an organza material that's been stippled with latex. Yeah. So it's a very, very, very different way of making a monster costume. Yeah. So you end up with two very different monsters, very different feels, and very different challenges in terms of what you're trying to do to restore them back to how they look. Mm. Hopefully, he will last another 20, 30 years sort of in this state. He looks amazing. He yeah, looks fantastic. He's, he's coming together nicely now. Thanks so much, Mike. Thanks no for joining us. Uh, if you want to head down to the Doctor Experience where you can see these guys fully restored, click here. And if you want to see more of Mike talking about Doctor Who, you can click here. Don't forget to subscribe for more videos, and we'll see you next time. Bye.